Dad, the chip shortage, the chip crisis, chip mageddon. I really don't know what the heck we're going to call it. We've broached, breached, broken a new threshold. 10 million vehicles lost to production. Did you see this coming? Yes, we did. We're, we're the only ones. <laughs> we, we said way back when that these numbers were going to be staggering and, and many more cars were going to be lost to production than what they had been projecting or letting on was going to happen. And, and you know, months ago, we were saying it's probably going to be in the 9 to 10 million vehicle range when they were in the 5 million vehicle range. Well... This was the week where we have, uh, with the advent of, what was it, 556,000 more vehicles lost, uh, that we cracked the 10 million barrier. And, and, and the vast majority of that 556,000 or 576,000 76, yeah. uh, were in uh, Asia and Southeast Asia. So um, a non-trivial amount happening here in North America as well. So 300,000 yes. in the Asian market, 214,000 in the United States and Canada and Mexico have been taken out of production because of the chip crisis and the ongoing chip shortage. I mean, in this video, we're going to kind of break down the, the data and also what impacts this is having on general automotive retail and what impacts that will ultimately have for consumers. But dad, I mean, I know we said it was going to happen, but it's kind of scary to see how quickly things have ramped up. It seems like over the past few weeks, as we've been doing our market updates on the used car side, we've seen prices tick up more rapidly there. And I think we're seeing that because the severity and seriousness of the new car shortage is being realized once again. I yes. don't really know what changed like between today and, and a month ago. I don't think anything materially has changed. Maybe I know what changed. Some more yeah yeah there was there was some honesty coming from some of the manufacturers to their dealer bodies uh you know for instance when when uh, mercedes benz suddenly says to their dealer body um v8s are only going to be available on some s classes next year any other mercedes benz that that could have had a v8 in the past will not be have have that engine as an opportunity uh, as an option uh for 2022 um that started the ball rolling and then toyota comes out and says uh, well we're expecting to cut production by 40 percent in september and then in the beginning of september they go uh, well truth be told we're going to cut up by another 40 percent or 40 uh, percent again in october then Honda comes out and says, uh, we're going to lose about 40% of our production capability. Uh, so what, what has happened is that, is that the, the manufacturers have, uh, have leveled with their dealer body to say, in as polite a way as they can, uh, you're basically out of the new car business. Figure out how you're going to stay in the car business. So concentrate on those used cars. And I think what's interesting here, Dad, Alex Partners put out a new projection. They're the other one. There's Auto Forecast Solutions. They do a weekly update. Yes. They're about as good at that as we are. I mean, it's just each week they're going to tell you that the number keeps going up. I mean, that's essentially what we've been doing. Yeah. Alex Partners, they're, they're, they're savvier. They gave a forecast back in May. Then they waited five months, and now yes. they've given a new forecast, and they just doubled it. Okay. The impact here is not only going to be felt right now, today. It's going to be felt, I think, for the next two, three, four years. And also, what the heck's going to happen to used vehicle supply when people are holding on to their leased car? Like, there are there are many trickle effects that I think are really hard to even comprehend that are going to have a material impact on car prices and also, like, a financial impact on the automakers, the dealerships, and obviously the consumer. We see that in no place more brightly than in the seasonally adjusted sales results or expectations. Cox Automotive, which is the huge conglomerate, we have a video about Cox on the channel. We, we, we have mixed feelings about Cox because they're just such a big conglomerate and they own everything. Like when you get a KBB value, that's from Cox Automotive. When you are a dealership and you're getting the uh, Mannheim value, that's from Cox Automotive. Everything runs through Cox. Cox, 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 Cox. They're just everywhere. Yes. However, they put out an annual seasonally adjusted report. We're down to 12.1 million vehicles is what they expect to be sold this year, Dad. That's the slowest pace since the Great Recession. Yes. I mean, that's crazy where we are right now. Yeah, and, and the difference is during the Great Recession, people didn't have the money to buy cars. Today, people seem to have the money and they have a desire to buy cars, but... 
but they're finally they're finally stepping back and saying in large enough numbers at this point that it's that it's really impacting the volume of new cars being sold they're stepping back and saying at these prices i'm no longer interested in participating i i read a comment on in one of our youtube videos today where a gentleman said you know he was looking for a vehicle and in his local area, they were all $2,500 to $3,000 above MSRP. And he found one 65 miles away that was only $1,000 more than MSRP. And, well, he felt like that was a win. And I had a conversation with my dear friend Glenn Bob yesterday where, you know, in, in the past— and Glenn is a Glenn is a salesperson at a dealership. Yes, a Mercedes dealership. at a Mercedes dealership. And, and in, in the past, if a dealership sold a car for MSRP, which hardly ever happened, they were ecstatic, okay, um, because there was so much competition that the likelihood of selling a car without discounting it was like, I don't know, one in a thousand. And today, to be able to get a car at MSRP for a consumer is considered a win. And, and the dealers are, you know, n not that they're hoggish, but they're saying, well, yeah, MSRP would be nice, but we want another four or $5,000 over that because, well, we can't replace the car. I, I kind of see both sides of it. I just don't see asking over MSRP as, as really being fair and consumer friendly in, in, the, in the best of cases. Oh, trust me. No, I mean, you and I and I think our entire community see eye to eye on that. But we also recognize the severity of what's going on in the shortage. And I think this upcoming week, the first week of October of 2021, whenever you're watching this, if it's 10 years from now and you're watching this and you're like, what the hell was going on back then? This is about to be a very telling week for a few reasons, Dad. It's quarterly results from the publicly traded companies. So yes. we're going to have uh, forward-looking statements from Ford, from Daimler, from other big OEMs. They've been singing a tune of, yeah, we're not going to produce as many cars, but we're still going to make as much money as we had forecasted before all this happened. I'm very intrigued to hear what the tone and tenor of those uh, reports are going to be and those conference calls, those earnings calls. The other thing that we're going to have at the beginning of next month is the market day supply data from Automotive News. Mm -hmm. uh, how, what is the national market day supply of inventory look like across the different brands that still report that information? We do, of course, back at joinyaa.com, have the market day supply for a particular vehicle in your area. Just run the VIN on the market price report and you'll be able to see it. But I'm very interested to see what the national national market day supply looks like and also what the national inventory levels look like. And the third thing I'll be interested to look at next week or in maybe 10 days or so from now is the incentives. I think we're running, we're, we're coming into the fourth quarter, which is typically the best incentive yes. time of year. I don't think we're going to see anything. I don't think we're going to see a damn thing, but I'm very curious. I read an article about Toyota Thon and yes. Lexus, you know, uh, December to season. remember. Are they going to happen? I think we're going to start to get some indications here as we're entering into the fourth quarter, probably just from the, the corporate guidance. But I, I, I think the severity of the shortage and what impact it's going to have is going to become even more clear over the next few weeks. And I bet you we see used car prices continue to skyrocket as a result of that because I can't what, – what leading indicator do we have that, that anyone's going to give good news? Like I, I can't think of anything. No, there, 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 you know, the, the chip shortage is, is – um worse than than everybody led on uh, initially um, so the amount of inventory keeps going down not up um, which which you know laws of supply and demand it's basic economics if the supply is low and the demand's high then the pricing is going to remain high the only the only thing that could cause a, a downward drop in retail pricing be it for new cars or or used cars is if people take themselves out of the market, which is what's happening a little bit in September, um, to where the customers are saying that we're just not going to spend that kind of money for these cars. You know, we'll overpay by paying MSRP, but we don't want to necessarily overpay by paying an additional $10,000 over that. Um, so uh, if I can plug a website of ours, stopbuyingcars.com, when people stop buying cars is when we will see pricing begin to come down to level off to a certain degree but it's, it's equal it's, parts of that and also like you just got to make cars again and and it's a combo yes and there there's 
there's nothing that indicates that the chip shortage or crisis, as, as I've dubbed it, is is uh, anywhere near its end. Um, so yeah. I, I mean, I, I feel confident, Dad, and I hope this doesn't come back to bite me. I feel confident saying that we we've tried to overstate what you're hearing in mainstream. I think we're still wrong. I think it's going to be that there is no there is so much money tied up in this. Like you can't even be the the Alex partners once said two hundred twenty billion. I bet yes. you that's wrong. There's probably a trillion dollars in economic stuff going on that's all screwy because of this. No one wants it. No one wants it. The consumers don't want it. The businesses don't want it. They're figuring out. The businesses are figuring out how to make a profit. This is not going away anytime soon. I'm thinking now in my head, Dad, 2024, 2025. Like that's when things are kind of maybe back to like normal if we ever get to a normal. I'm not trying to be like Debbie Downer over here. I'm just saying I think this is this is going to be a prolonged and involved process to get out of where we currently are. And no one is talking about it in as serious a tone as I think they should be. And it's also going to drive inflation. Yes. It's definitely going to drive inflation. I mean, used car prices, new car prices. It's not, not, not to try and put a funny spin on it. But I, I love can tell, funny spins. But I can tell you at, at, at 24, 25, there's nothing normal about being 24 or 25. <laughs> So Fair in enough. 24 or 25, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what I don't know what normal looks like anymore. And I don't know what the new normal will be. I, I think it will be, um, if I were to guess, it's going to be probably 70% of what the old normal was. And I've said it, uh, I, if I had a dollar for every time I'd said it, I, I really would be able to retire. But if, if an average dealership had a thousand new cars on the lot in the past, and that was normal, I think the new normal, once we can get back to what's the new normal, they might have 700 cars, 650 to 700 cars. So it'll be somewhere around 65 to 70% of what the old normal was. And that would allow the manufacturers to uh, um, uh, plan a little better, I think, um, and it would allow the dealers to continue to uh, retain higher sales profits uh, because there just won't be quite as much availability as there had been in the past. And all of that, all of that bodes poorly for the consumer. Stopbuyingcars.com. My yeah. dad plugged it. It's a place to go. Um, if you are going to buy a car, join YA.com. We'll do our best to help you. We've got live <laughs> chat. We've got the community forum. We're trying our best to help. We'll provide another update next week. And stay tuned. Once we get the inventory data as well, we'll post that on the channel ASAP. Let us know your take on the chip shortage down in the comments below. Are we overstating it? Are we underselling it? What do you think is going to happen? Pops, as always, appreciate your time. And uh, until next time. Oh, well, someone I'm, turned on the lights. Yeah, I'm so, I'm so happy the way you can just remotely turn on those lights. Um, I'll talk to you soon, handsome. I love you. Thanks so much. Love you too. Bye-bye.